As President, I will always defend our military families. We will honor our great veterans, and we will restore peace through strength. Thank you. Thank you. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, we win. We're going to win. We're going to win it as a group. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. And I will do something that nobody else even talks about because they have no idea what's happening. But I do. I will prevent World War III. I will prevent it. Big problem. It's going to happen. In my next term, we will build the Great Iron Dome over our country, a dome like has never been seen before, a state-of-the-art missile defense shield that will be entirely built in America and create jobs, jobs, jobs. We will take over a horribly run capital in Washington, D.C. We will clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime, but rather it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. And on day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and any other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And I will keep men out of women's sports on day one. Sign. I will fully uphold our Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech. And I will secure our elections like never before. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots proof of citizenship and voter ID. Back to the old days. But until then, Republicans must win. We have to get out and vote. We want to do a landslide that's, you know the expression, too big to rig. Too big to rig. This man is gonna mess around and get reelected. What's going on, Champagne Gang? Fizz fam, confidant. <laughs> Welcome to Fizz Feed Conversations, Trump Watch 2024. And before anyone gets in my comments talking about, oh, she's a Trump supporter. No, she's not. She is a mother with a 22 year old son in the Air Force. So she is absolutely paying attention to what is going on with this election and what is going on around the world. And you should too. Well, why aren't you doing a Biden watch? Because Biden is not the wild card. Trump is. Are y'all paying attention to what's going on around you? This is a former president, a former sitting president who has gone up for impeachment, who has gone up for indictment, who has been convicted of, what is it, 34 felonies? and who is currently on probation, still running for president. On top of that, if he is elected president, you will have a sitting president in the Oval Office behind the Resolute Desk with a criminal record and criminal history, with felonies making decisions on your behalf. And he's gonna get reelected. And I know you're asking, well, how do you know? How is it that you think he's gonna win? Well, all you have to do is look behind him. Do you see the demographics of individuals who are behind him? And I know I can hear it right now. Someone's gonna say, oh, but that's just a few people. A few people that's representing many. You've got to understand if that many different demographics of individuals are sitting behind him, then those individuals represent an entire demographic that looks like them that are following Trump and that are standing behind him. You have young white men. 20s. You have young African American women. You have young Hispanic men. It looks like I even see someone of Asian descent. You have older African American men and you have older white individuals all sitting together behind this man on one stage. 
If you don't think that this represents an entire demographic of individuals who are following him, you are absolutely insane. And it shows how clueless you are to exactly what's going on. And he's going to do it by telling them everything that they want to hear right now. This speech was a speech from the presidential campaign trail in Pennsylvania. And as you see, his entire theme for his campaign is going to be this Make America Great Again. And he's pointing out everything that he's going to do as soon as he's in office. He's talking about removing LGBTQ. I already told you guys that. And if you haven't paid attention to uh, this Project 25 that they're working on, I am going to pin above a link so that you can check out the video that I did on that so that you can see everything that this man is talking about changing the minute that he gets in office from removing LGBTQ, removing any gender affirming terms, from the crackdowns on violence and drugs, which will include unleashing the, the military into civilian areas of unrest if need be. See, what you got to understand is, at its core, America is a southern-run country with Christian values. It is. We've got to admit that that's what America is at its core. And once we finally admit that, then we'll understand what this whole fight to return everything back to Christian values is. I'm going to tell you where we messed up. We messed up when we started giving everyone the privilege to do everything that they wanted to do and anything that they wanted to do. That's where we messed up because even at, cause let me press pause because I hear y'all. I be hearing y'all before y'all even speak. I hear y'all, but America doesn't follow after Christian values. No, not all the time we do. Just like you don't follow after everything that your parents told you to do. It's no difference. The Republican Party sees America right now as a unruly out of control child that needs discipline and rearing to get back on track and right now they are in a race to do everything that they can in order to save what they consider as a great country and make America great again but where we messed up when we started giving everyone the ability to choose how you want to identify there it is that's where we messed up and that's what's going to usher in this project 2025 and that's what's going to get Trump re-elected I guarantee you because people People are tired of hearing about transsexuals. People are tired of hearing about men arguing with women on whether or not they are women. About men arguing with women on the fact that women are gatekeeping womanhood. They're tired of these conversations. They're tired of it being shoved down children's throats in school. They're tired of you telling them that it's okay for a child to identify as a dog and a cat and there's nothing you can do or say to them. If nothing else, he'll mess around and win on that ideology alone because there are a lot of people who share that belief. Do you not realize that in some states, if you try to stop your children from identifying as cats and dogs, that your parental rights can be stripped and your children can be taken away? Do you not realize in a lot of states, children are going to school dressed like cats and dogs? full fur like they're an animal and we're telling them it's okay to identify as such do we not see the problem with this because what are you going to do if one day your child decides to go outside and challenge one see that's the part that we miss and that's where the problem comes in at you can identify as whatever you want to identify as but you cannot go out and challenge one because if you challenge what you're not it's going to show you what you are Black people and Hispanics don't support Trump. That's what we said, right? The lie detector proved that was a lie. Look behind him. All those black and Hispanic and young and old standing behind him. See, the problem was, in election one, y'all were scared to admit that you followed him. This election, everybody's out front saying that you're following him. And we can say all day long, we don't vote. We not going out to vote. That is your prerogative, whatever you choose to do. But what he has come Coming down the pipeline is going to change everything and we're not even paying attention to it and then when it happens 
everyone's gonna sit back oh my god look at what trump is doing trump is doing everything that trump said he was gonna do this is what we miss about these politicians a lot of them tell us exactly what they're gonna do when they get in office and somehow we believe it's not gonna happen somehow we think they're lying and then when we start seeing it happen then we're shocked and confused right now trump and biden are gearing up for the presidential debate but there's some big news that's still looming over this debate because the Supreme Court is about to rule on Trump's claim of immunity from criminal prosecution and it could really shake a lot of things up. Because here's the scoop with it, right? Trump is arguing that he's immune from prosecution for certain acts he carried out while he was president. If the court sides with him, it could turn his criminal trials upside down. Plus, it might add an interesting twist to Thursday's primetime debate on CNN in where his legal issues are bound to come up you know they are they're not going to be able to resist grant rear from the campbell public affairs institute at syracuse university stated that if a decision comes out before the debate the candidates will definitely be bringing it up the supreme court is set to announce opinions on wednesday and thursday morning so we could hear something right before the debate kicks off if not we might get a ruling on friday at the heart of this issue is whether former presidents can be prosecuted for actions taken during their time in office. The justices heard arguments back in April and hinted that they might rule that former presidents can be prosecuted for private conduct but still have immunity for official duties. So Trump has been super focused on this case, frequently posting on Truth Social about how a ruling against him would impact the president's ability to do their job without fear of prosecution. Even if the ruling doesn't come up directly in the debate, it's definitely going to cast a shadow over the event. Biden is expected to question Trump's fitness for office and highlight his legal troubles including his conviction on 34 felony accounts of falsifying business records in New York. Trump's legal battles are far from over though. He's facing federal charges in DC for trying to overturn the 2020 elections and in Florida for handling classified documents after leaving office. Plus, he has state charges in Georgia related to the 2020 election. So a Republican strategist mentioned that Biden is likely to focus on Trump's indictments, his character, and the 2020 election during the debate. Recently, Biden's campaign has been more aggressive about Trump's legal problems, even launching an ad calling him a convicted criminal. If the Supreme Court rules that Trump has immunity for certain acts, it could disrupt Biden's strategy and give Trump a significant win, especially considering that Trump appointed three of the justices on the conservative court. Biden's campaign has been focusing on contrasting himself with Trump on issues like democracy and respect for institutions. He might use the ruling if it goes against Trump to further emphasize these differences. On the other hand, Biden might face questions about his own family since his son Hunter Biden was recently convicted on three felony gun charges. Biden has said that he accepts the outcome and won't pardon his son. Trump, meanwhile, is expected to frame his prosecutions as political interferences by Democrats trying to prevent him from winning another term, while his advisors want him to focus on issues like inflation and immigration during the debate. Trump has been quick to complain about the legal system on Truth Social. Just recently, Trump posted and will state in this speech that you're going to continue listening to in a moment. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being indicted for you. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And if that's not a hell of a statement that could potentially get a person a presidential win, then I don't know what it is. That statement was right up there with the speech from the Independence Day movie. Good morning. In less than an hour, Aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that, 
Words should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July. And you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution. But from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live. To exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. So you're trying to tell me that's not one of the coldest speeches for unity ever given, ever? It is for me. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> but that's right up there with that statement that Trump made. And what you have to understand is Trump knows how to speak the language of the people. Do you remember in the movie Gladiator, the whole purpose of the movie was them trying to return the power back to the people. And that's the kind of speech that Trump is running on, returning the power back to the people and giving the people a voice. See, the problem with us is everyone wants a piece of the power. And if you have a person that's standing before you talking about they have the power to give you a piece of the power, oh, people are going to eat it up. He got them hook, line, and sink no questions asked so I'm getting ready to play for you guys the rest of this speech um some of the clips from the rest of the speech that I say that he did on his campaign trail in Pennsylvania drop in the comments and let me know what you think about presidency 2024 you don't have to tell me who you're voting for hmm, that ain't none of my business but what I want you to do is pay attention to who you're voting for and make sure that the individual that you're voting for shares your same beliefs and values until next time, thank you for joining us in Fizz Feed Conversations, Trump Watch 2024, and always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Wait a minute. Did you guys hit that like button? The subscribe button? Consider becoming a confidant, joining the Fizz fam, joining the champagne gang. Don't worry, you'll fit right in. This is a judgment-free zone. It doesn't matter what color you are, black, white, or in between. It doesn't matter what party you support, Democratic, Republican, or in between. Champagne Secrets is a place of empowerment and a place of growth. And we also have fun and sip on a little something, something while doing it. So consider joining us. Until next time, raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta. All we want them to do is be honest. Because they're all going out of business. Nobody believes them anymore. And it didn't help when they went along with the Biden scam. What is he called? What is he called? You know what he calls it? So they get him in about nine different positions. I mean, even normal positions, although I assume he's been in some very bad ones. But they get him in all these horrible, compromising posts. And then they say he wasn't, it really wasn't that way. It was total. Then everybody sends in, they all have cameras. See, every one of you has a camera. If I blow it up here, though, they actually, they take a perfect, brilliant, beautiful statement that I make. I go for two hours without teleprompters. And if I say one word slightly out, they say he's cognitively impaired. <laughs> Whereas Biden can run into walls. He can fall off the stage. He can fall up the stairs. He falls up. He can turn around, listen to this, from 20,000 feet a paratrooper is landing right in front of him. Everybody, all the foreign leaders, they're watching. And he turns around to look at a tree. <laughs> right? No. And then they say it was fake, he was fine. 
And then the press goes along with it. They go along with it. They say, isn't it terrible the way they cover him? No, no, he's terrible. The worst president in history by far. And we have to get him out or this country is not going to survive another year. According to the much better national crime victimization survey, there are, has actually been a 43 percent increase in violent crime since I left office, including 58 percent increase in rapes, an 89 percent increase in aggravated assaults, and a 56 percent increase in robberies. Other than that, I think we're doing quite well, don't you? But with your vote, Joe Biden's wave of bedlam and death and terror will begin to recede the moment I take the oath of office, January 20th. First, I will stand with the heroes of law enforcement. We will give our police officers the respect and protection, resources and support that they need to drive down your crime to zero. Second, we will surge federal law enforcement resources to the places that need them most. There are certain places, like places that I know very well here, that are just absolutely out of control. I mean, if you walk down certain streets here, you have a 50-50 chance of not ever seeing your home again. That's not too good. Instead of throwing Christians in jail, as Biden has done, we are going to crack down on the gangs, the drug dealers, human traffickers, and criminal cartels. Third, we're going to stand up to the out-of-control, Soros-backed DAs like Philadelphia's despicable Marxist prosecutor, Larry Krasner. How did he get in? Krasner has the blood of countless men, women, children on his hands, including thousands of African-American citizens, because he refuses to prosecute people. They don't refuse to prosecute me. I got more prosecutions than any human being. I've got more than the great Alphonse Capone. You ever hear of Scarface? Oh, my parents. My parents are looking down. How did this happen to my son? You know how it happened? I won an election that I wasn't supposed to win. I then did better the second time by a lot. We did much better, you know, for those of you in the fake news, we did much better the second time than we did the first, like not even a contest. In fact, we got the most votes for a sitting president in the history of our country. And then we were told, oh, but you just, you just missed it. You just lost. No, no, we can't let this happen. And I'll tell you what, I have never seen, and we had a great 2016, we had an even better 2020. There has never been enthusiasm like I'm seeing right now. There's never been. Never been. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Great. You know, they've got the best seat in the house. Because if there's a star in the crowd, you know, their cameras, the cameras on them, like the whole thing. They maybe only can see the back of my head. But you know what? The cameras on them, you think you have the best seats. They, if there's a star in the group, they will be found by the fake news. <laughs> But my administration will aggressively defend the right of every American to live in safety and a peace. We're going to have a safe country again. We're going to have a safe country again. For that same reason, we will end Biden migrant crime. New category. It's a vicious crime. I told Dana White of UFC, I said, here's what we're going to do. You know, these are tough cookies coming into our country, it's coming with prisons and Mental institutions. I said to Dana White, UFC, he's got a big fight going on right now. He's a good friend of mine. You know what he said the other day? They said, who's the toughest person you've ever met? He said, definitely Donald Trump. He said, Donald Trump. How about that? 
But I said, Dana, Dana, I have an idea for you to make a lot of money. You're going to go and start a new migrant fight league. Migrants, only migrants. And then at the end of the year, the champion migrant is going to fight your champion. And I hate to tell you, Dana, I think the migrant might win. That's how tough they are. These are not, this is not a normal situation. This is not, oh, isn't it wonderful, these wonderful people. These people are drug dealers, gang members, killers in so many different ways. No. And we probably have 18 million. We'll have 20 million by the time we get this guy out of there. But we got to get him out fast. We got even bigger problems. We got to get, we got to get him out fast. The biggest problem is what he's saying to Russia, China, to Kim Jong-un, North Korea. What he's saying to these countries, they're laughing at us. They can't believe this has happened to America. On day one, I will seal the border, stop the invasion, and send Joe Biden's illegal aliens the hell back home. Day after day, week after week, Joe Biden is releasing illegal criminals into our communities to rape, pillage, plunder, and to kill. And by the way, here's the only thing. He doesn't even have a clue, in my opinion. These are young, smart people that happen to be fascists and communists that surround. They surround him in the Oval Office, the beautiful, resolute desk. It's been soiled. That gorgeous, resolute desk. What they're doing to our country, they're destroying our country. Just this week, a 12-year-old girl in Houston, Jocelyn Nungari, was tied up, stripped, and strangled to death after walking to a 7-Eleven, her body dumped near the side of the road in a shallow creek. Charged with Jocelyn's heinous murder or two, illegal alien savages that Joe Biden recently set loose into our country. They came across our border, <laughs> claiming they feared for their lives in Venezuela. They feared for their lives in Venezuela. You know, in Venezuela, crime is down 72% because they've taken their criminals, their drug dealers, and most of the people in their jails, and they brought them to the United States of America. So they were afraid for their lives, and, and uh, think of it, they couldn't stand it. I, they were so afraid. I'm so afraid, Venezuela. But they waited only weeks before murdering this precious, young, beautiful girl. One of them was here for 21 days before the murder took place. Last week in New York, another illegal alien who Joe Biden set loose into our country approached two 13-year-old children with a machete in broad daylight, and like a scene from a horror movie, he forced them into the woods, tied them together by their wrists, and raped the young girl at a park in Queens, a park that I grew up right next to, while filming it on camera. He put it on camera. He thought it was great. You know, I used to go to that park. I'd ride my bicycle like a kid. I was a kid, too. Can you believe it? I'd ride my bicycle to the park. My mother loved me, but she'd say, oh, good, now be home at a certain time, you know. I'd ride there. I'd, this went on for years. There was never any thought of anything happening. Now, if you go to a park near your home, you have a very good chance of never seeing your child again. This is not living in a country that we grew up in, and we're not going to stand for it. We're not going to stand for it. We're going to take our country back. We're going to take our country back. In Iowa this week, another illegal immigrant released by Joe Biden pled guilty to sexually assaulting a 12-year-old girl. And last week, yet another Biden migrant was arrested for the rape and murder of Rachel. Rachel Moran. I just spoke to her mother, Patricia. Patty, as they say, but Patricia. Rachel was a 37-year-old Maryland, mother of five, whom he attacked while she was out for a run. She wanted to stay in good shape, and she ends up getting killed. Police believe that the animal responsible for Rachel's killing first murdered another young woman in El Salvador. Then he fled across Joe Biden's wide open border. Wide open! Come on in. Into the United States. You know, we had the safest border in the history of our country. Now we have the unsafest border in the history of the world. 
After which he savagely attacked a nine-year-old girl and her mother in a home in Los Angeles before killing Rachel. And a lot of Rachel's family is here, I have to say, that they're uh, incredible people. And we're deeply grateful for the, the brother and sister of uh, Rachel, Michael Morin, Aaron Morin Lehman. Would you stand up, please? Please, wherever you may be. They've gone through, they've gone through hell. I've watched them on television. I've watched you on television, and it is a tough deal. People say time, time, time. I don't know about time. I don't know if that's the answer. Thank you very much. Michael and Aaron, we grieve Rachel's loss. We pray that God will ease your pain, and we resolve to secure our border so this will never happen again. But you know it's going to happen again because we have an incompetent man. He's an incompetent. And he happens to be the president. You know, all he has to do is say, close the border. He doesn't need Congress. He keeps, I need Congress. I, I didn't have Congress. I closed the border. We had the safest border. He doesn't need, all he has to do is say, close the border. And it's closed. That's all you have to say. He doesn't need anything from Congress. It's just uh, unlikely that a thing like that would have happened. Thank you for being with us. That's when I first saw we built hundreds of miles of wall. We got Mexico to give us thousands and thousands of soldiers. And we had a great border even while we were building it. And then we were going to add 200 miles of wall. And we had a rigged election take place. And what happened is when I left, all hell broke loose. And they didn't want to finish the wall. They didn't want to put up the additional wall we built. And it was all built to the highest specs of Border Patrol and ICE. And they're incredible people, by the way, Border Patrol and ICE. And instead of putting it up, which would have taken three weeks, they decided to sell it for five cents on the dollar. And the rest is, and the rest is history. When I return to the White House, we will stop the plunder, rape, slaughter, and destruction of our American suburbs, cities, and towns. That's what's happening. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Worse and worse and worse by the day. We will shut down deadly sanctuary cities. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement. And on day one, we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. We have no choice. We have no choice. You know who had the largest? General Dwight D. Eisenhower when he was president. Good general, good president. Very much responsible for the interstate highway system. But he was, uh, he was tremendous on not wanting people to illegally flow into our country. He, was, he had the strongest deportation program. Ours will unfortunately have to be much stronger than his because he didn't have 20 million people walk in. And these are people, these are people out of the jails and out of the mental institutions. He didn't have that. He had people walk in, but they weren't the people that we're getting. And you know what? I know every one of the presidents over there, presidents, I call them presidents, dictators, kings, queens. I know every one of them. They come from all over the world, by the way. I would do the same thing as them. They're emptying their jails, and they're emptying their mental institutions. I would have done it faster than them, because actually they have some people left. I would have had. They're dumping them in. We're like a dumping ground for the rest of the world. And it's going to stop on January 20th at a level that you haven't seen before. It's going to stop. Thank you very much. No, we're doing good. You know, we have some people here. Where are those people? Look at those. See those beautiful women up there? I don't know what the hell their husbands are. Look at that. They come from a place called, nobody's ever heard of this, North Carolina, right? Which we won both times and won by a lot. And in fact, they... We did so good, we took Michael Watley, the head of the Republican Party in North Carolina, we put him in charge. 
This is their 118th rally. And I don't know what the hell is happening with their husband. I've never figured it. They're all married. They're all happily, I think, married. Are you happily married? Look at this. This They come over, way over 100 times. And we also have front row Joes here. Where the hell is Look at them, front row. And they come in, and they have been, they've actually, they've been here 201 times. I can't believe I did that many. How about me? Did I do that many? I did that many. So, thank you, front row. And thank you very much. It's nice, and you look great. You look great. Are we going to win? All right. We don't have a choice. So we got this poll last night from Rasmussen, and it was very inter They also did it, like, with Kennedy and with the other ones in there. Cornell West. He's one of my favorite candidates, Cornell West. And I like... I like her also, Jill Stein. I like her very much. You know why? She takes 100% from them. He takes 100%. Kennedy's probably 50-50, but he's a fake. He's a fake. He's a total fake. You don't want to. He's more liberal than Joe Biden and all of these uh, communists that work for him. Kennedy's more liberal than all of them. He wants to be in the debate, but he's got bad numbers. You can't do that, right? I'd like to have him in the debate, actually. I'd love to have him in the debate, but he's got bad numbers, very bad numbers. No, I don't think he's going to ever make it. But Joe Biden's open border has also been a disaster for our great African-American and Hispanic-American population. So, what's happening when millions of people flow over, the people that are most hurt are, number one, the African-Americans in this country. Number two, the Hispanic. Have they taken your job yet, sir? They better not. I don't think they're going to get your job. Uh, I'll fight for you. They're not getting your job. Nobody's getting his job. But I will tell you, they're taking African-American jobs and Hispanic-American jobs. You know who else they're really affecting? The unions, and I have to tell you, you know, we have a lot of Teamsters here. Do we have a lot of Teamsters? We have Teamsters, and I think we're doing 89 percent or something with the Teamsters. And they have a great leader. I hope Sean is listening right now. But we have a shot at even getting it from the top. I think we have a shot. But we have great Teamsters. They work for me a lot in New York because they did the concrete trucks and other things, and they were incredible. So, but. The unions are being incredibly impacted by all of these millions of people pouring into our country. So, uh, but, but the African-American population is being destroyed by Joe Biden. This, remember his statement, super predator, remember? Just don't forget the super predator statement. This guy's the biggest phony on earth. Virtually all of the net jobs created under Biden have gone to migrants. You know, almost 100% of the jobs created by Crooked Joe. What's better, Crooked Joe or Sleepy Joe? Ready? Wait, free poll. Free poll. This is a free. You know, you do a poll, they say, that'll cost $1 million. They go out and they interview about 200 people. That'll be $1 million, right? Ready? We'll go Crooked Joe first, Sleepy Joe second. Crooked Joe first, ready? Okay. Who likes Crooked Joe the best? Who likes Sleepy Joe the best? Crooked Joe? Sleepy Joe? Whoa! You know, that's the first time that Sleepy Joe has ever beaten Crooked Joe. It's the first. So tonight, We'll refer to him as Sleepy Joe. Because right now, as you know, it's been reported that right now Crooked Joe's gone to a log cabin to study, prepare. No, he didn't do He's sleeping now. Because they want to get him good and strong so a little before debate time he gets a shot in the ass. And that's... They want to strengthen him up. 
So he comes out. He'll come out. I Okay. I say he'll come out all jacked up, right? All jacked up. No. Will anybody be watching the debate on Thursday night? I'm shocked. No, I'm shocked. But they've taken so much fun out of it. There's no audience. They actually wanted us to sit down. I said, look, I, I really want to do this thing. You know, they gave me, what happened is they gave me something that couldn't be accepted. They gave me an offer I couldn't accept, and I said, I'll do it. Number one, it was CNN fake news, right? Who hates Trump? <laughs> then it was fake tapper, who really hates Trump. And Dana Bash. Then it was, you know, it's Dana, it's not Dana, it's Dana. You know that, right? Right? It's Dana, right? Isn't it? It's either. She has a good. Then they said, think of this, but no audience. It's like death. There's two of us and two of them. It's like death. This could be the most boring, or it could be quite exciting. Who knows? Soleimani gone. Think of that. Think of, think of what we did. The leader of ISIS, gone. All gone. That's al-Baghdadi. Al-Baghdadi is gone. They're all gone. We had the safest country ever. Kim Jong-un liked Trump. He liked Trump. Got along with him good. If that was going to be a nuclear war, he liked me. We had no problem. By the way, he's not happy right now. You're going to end up in a war if we don't get this thing done. It's going to happen soon. The, the area I'm most troubled by is the next five months, because really bad things could happen with this president. This president is a disaster for our country, and I'm very worried about the next five months. Five months is a long time. You know what five months is? In this world, five months is an eternity. It's an eternity. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. Not going to allow it. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being indicted for you. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. Never. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way. So, you have a second very important function. You have to, you know, we win Pennsylvania, we win the presidency. And all I can tell you is you'll be happy. You'll have a great economy. You'll have low energy costs. You'll be drilling, drilling, drilling. You'll get all the way back. You're going to be at levels that you've never seen before, just like you were. You know, they asked that question. Even the enemy said, I hope they don't compare the four years with Biden and the four years with Trump. But I do that now because they said that people were happy. It's like 92 percent preferred my term than his term. What's good about his term? Not one thing good has happened during what has happened. They had the worst catastrophe in history, the greatest embarrassment in the history of our country with Afghanistan. But you have to do something else. You have to elect a senator, because we can also take the Senate. And if we take the Senate, the presidency, we're going to take the House, I'm sure of that. And we have a man who's a warrior, a great military person, an incredible guy. And we have to elect him as the U.S. Senator from your state. And just so you know, Dave McCormick is a seventh-generation Pennsylvanian who grew up in Bloomsburg, went to West Point, did great there, and earned a Bronze Star for his service in the first Gulf War, which was a victory. Dave went on to an outstanding career in business, and now he's fighting for the people of this Commonwealth, and he loves this Commonwealth. I mean, he's really a high-quality person. I actually said, 
Dave, are you too high quality for this job? But I'd rather have that than the other. And honestly, you have a senator who's been there forever. His father was there forever. He doesn't do anything. I don't think I ever met him during my years in Washington. He doesn't do anything. I don't want to use the word he's a stiff, but he doesn't do anything. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody has any idea. And Dave McCormick is going to be an activist for you. We have so much. You have to protect your Second Amendment. You, have, you need help. Dave will vote to secure your borders, stand up to China, unleash incredible amounts of Pennsylvania energy. You know, you're taking a lot of money, but they want to stop it. They, they want to have you never take out energy out of your beautiful ground. I call it liquid gold. And he wants to stop Biden inflation. And he wants to drain the swamp. Most importantly, Dave will defeat your atrocious radical left Senator Bob Casey. Bob Casey, look, I mean, he doesn't do anything. He's a stiff. He doesn't do anything. You ever have people like that? You meet them and they put you to sleep. You say, hello, how are you? And you fall asleep. That's Bob Casey. You fall asleep. Hello, Bob, how are you? I'm going to sleep, Bob. And Bob Casey votes for Sleepy Joe 98% of the time. 98. Bob Casey could have used his vote to stop Joe Biden's invasion of this country. Instead, he voted in favor of sanctuary cities. He voted against Kate's law. How do you vote against Kate's law? He voted to give illegal aliens taxpayer-funded benefits. He voted against the border wall. And he supports Joe Biden's bill to institute a minimum of 2 million illegal border crosses every year. He passed this thing. He signed this bill. It's the worst. It's worse than it is without it. It's crazy. And then he never did anything about it anyway, because he never does. Because Joe doesn't do anything that's good. Named one, name one thing that he's done in three and a half years that's good. Pennsylvania, you need to defeat open borders. Bob Casey. You have, to let, you have to get rid of your open borders, and Bob Casey will fight us all the way. Well, he doesn't fight, really. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't really. It's not like, oh, gee, Bob Casey. He just goes like this. They have guys that fight. Well, they fight for crooked elections, let's face it. But you have to elect. Look, I know David McCormick. I know him through business. He's tough as hell, and he's good. He's what you need. And really a great. I will also take immediate action to restore prosperity to every part of our land. When I left office, inflation was practically nothing. During my term, we had gasoline down to $1.87 a gallon, and at some points, even less than that. And the 30 year mortgage rate was 2.7%. And then Joe Biden blew it to shreds. Biden's inflation, price hikes, and energy destruction have cost the average American family an astounding $28,000. 28000 That's a lot of money. And with me, they actually made 16000 That's a lot of money. You know, inflation is a disaster. It's a country buster. It's a total country buster. And when you look at the prices of eggs and bacon, it's gone up. 100 percent, much more than that in some cases. And if people are making, <laughs> she said, we can't eat anymore. You can't. Don't ever eat again. Even I won't buy bacon anymore. It's too expensive. I said, I'd love to have some lovely bacon, darling. And she said, no, I'm sorry, it's too expensive. <laughs> the monthly cost of the typical mortgage has doubled under crooked Joe Biden, but it's actually gone up much more than that. So. With me, it was around 2% interest. Now it's 10% and you can't get the money. So when you can't get the money, that means it's not 10%, right? You know, that's... On day one of my new administration, we will throw out Bidenomics and replace it immediately with Maganomics. It was just announced. This is a big announcement. 
It was just announced that the budget deficit is now expected to be $2 trillion. For $2 trillion. That's all of his Green New Scam stuff. You know, the Green New Scam. Let's build a windmill on every corner. A windmill that doesn't work. Darling, I'd like to watch television. I'm sorry the wind isn't blowing tonight. <laughs> Making his brutal inflation much worse than anybody ever imagined. I believe it's the worst inflation the country's ever had to stop. Bidenflation, I will end Crooked Joe's wasteful spending and rapidly terminate the Green New Scam. The Green New Scam. You know what the Green New Scam is? No water in your faucets. You ever try buying a new home and you turn it on, they have restrictors in there. You want to wash your hair? Well, you want to wash your hands. You turn on the water and it goes drip, drip. The soap, you can't get it off your hand. So you keep it running for about 10 times longer, you try it. The worst is your hair. I have this beautiful, luxuriant hair. And I put stuff on. And I put it in. Lather. I like lots of lather, because I like it to come out extremely dry, because it seems to be slightly thicker that way. And I lather up, and then you turn on this crazy shower, and the thing drip, drip. And you say, I'm going to be here for 45 minutes. What the? They put restrictors, and they put them on in places like here, where there's so much water, you don't know what to do with it. You know, it's called rain. It rains a lot in certain places. But uh, no, their idea, you know, did you see the other day? They just put, I opened it up, and they closed it again. I opened it, they closed it. Washing machines to wash your dishes. There's a problem. They don't want you to have any water. They want no water. And I was with Whirlpool, the head of Whirlpool. I helped save that company because they were being attacked by China and South Korea. And I put tariffs on those machines coming in. They were dumping thousands, hundreds of thousands of machines. And the company now is a tremendous success in Ohio because of Jim Jordan, actually. The great Jim Jordan. And I said, what else can I do for you? They say, sir, we don't, we're not allowed to use practically any water. I need more, more water. I said, I'm going to give it to you. That would took me about two seconds. But in a washing machine, they give you no water. In the shower, you have no water. In the sinks, the whole country is going crazy. They want you to have electric vehicles. They don't go far. They cost too much, and they're made in China. That's why Sean Fain, or whatever the hell his name is, is going to be out of a job soon, because he approved it. He's the head of the United Auto Workers. That's his name, I think. Don't forget, I've done most of this speech without these stupid teleprompters, so. Do you think Biden could do that? I don't think so. I had a speech recently. I was in Ohio, and we had 45-mile-an-hour winds, and I get up to the stage, and we had a tremendous crowd, and we have a good Senate race. Bernie, Bernie Marino is going to win, I think. He's got a good chance of winning. But I went up for him, and I get up, 45, 50 miles. I never saw wind like this in my life. If you had fake hair, don't run for politics. Just don't do it. It was blowing. I've never seen. I even went up with a hat, and the hat disappeared, too. Everything disappeared. But I woke up, and within about the first line, ladies and gentlemen of Ohio, wah, and the things blew off the stage. I said, I am up here all by myself. I've lost my teleprompters. I've lost my hat. We got 50-mile-an-hour winds. People say we shouldn't even be here. But let's go. And I, I spoke for two hours. And Bernie Marino then went out and won the primary in record fashion. So is that good? I said, you think Crooked Joe could do it? I don't think so. Sleepy Joe couldn't have done it. Sleepy Joe would go to sleep. But I will repeal every disastrous Biden regulation, cancel Crooked Joe's insane electric vehicle mandate, and we will, ready? Drill, baby, drill. <laughs> Gonna get your energy way, way down. The Pennsylvania oil and gas industries will boom like never before. So what he did, is prices started going. That's what caused inflation. He started cutting all the stuff that I did. So then he immediately put it back. So they're doing sort of similar numbers. He immediately put it back. But if they ever won, you're never going to see oil again. You're never going to see a car that goes more than a very short distance, okay? 
You're going to be all driving trucks if you drive a truck that's electric. You'll be stopping six times to one time, six to one. I had the truckers in the other day. One of them said to me, big, I said, how many trucks do you have? Sir, I have 28,000. 28,000. These are the biggest truckers in the world, I think. But he said they want to make them use all electric trucks. I said, what's the problem with that? They don't go too far. They're too heavy. You know, one thing nobody knew, they're so heavy, two and a half times heavier than diesel fuel, that if you make them all electric with the batteries, the heavy batteries, you'd have to build and rebuild Every bridge in the country would have to be rebuilt. I said, did you tell that to the people in Washington? You know, sometimes you could tell something like really simple. Did you tell that to the people in Washington? Yes, sir. What did they say? We don't care. We want you to go all electric. They would have to stop six times from New York to Los Angeles. How many times do you have to stop with diesel? He said, we don't have to stop at all. We go from New York to Los Angeles. You talk about having problems with trucks and with deliveries. This is, he said it's going to put us, he said, sir, all of my life, for 50 years, I've been building damn trucks and buying them. And every single year, they got better. They got more fuel efficient. They got stronger. They got bigger. They looked better. Then we started adding apartments to the cab. Some of those apartments, sir, you'd be proud to live in. I said, I don't know about that. I think so, maybe. Hey, I'd have no problem. I, you know, you don't know the real Donald Trump. But he said every year, so it's such a great statement, right? Every single year, they got better without fail. I said, who makes the best truck? He said, they all make good. I went through every company, all great. They were all very complimentary. He's a tough cookie, too. But he started with one truck, and now he has 28,000 trucks. I guess he's pretty good, right? I said, that's a lot of work, right? He said, I work my ass off, sir. But he said, and now they want to take it all away. Because I said, every year they got better. And if they do the electric truck, we're going to go back 80 years, not 60 years. You go back 80 years, it'll be a disaster for the country. I said, you've got to tell them that. He said, we tell them they couldn't care less. They don't even hear you. These people are sick. And it's Biden and it's the communists that surround the desk. I'm telling you, it's Biden and the communists. We will also work to lift up Black, Hispanic, and other communities in Philadelphia and all across the United States. And by the way, I have the best polling numbers that any president has had. They said in 75 years, I think it's longer, with Black and with Hispanic voters. We have the best polling numbers. <laughs> Beautiful. Proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. What is the conversations?